So this is where I live and some of the trees that are down right now. You can see that branch is still on the power line. This tree is humongous. I think that line's not a power line, but... Until all this stuff gets settled, honestly, I, I don't see us getting power back. What they're saying is, It'll be back on by the 17th. That's the chatter I've heard in the neighborhood. I hope they're right, but I, 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 how do you turn the power on with something like this going on? Right? And it's my understanding that power lines are the ones on top, the ones highest up above the ground. Uh, that are on the poles and then you might have your internet and telephone lines that are below that. Namaste, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be across the planet, around the world. My name is Greg from In5D.com and made it through the hurricane. Still without power right now. Uh, no electricity no internet I don't know what good the internet would do without the electricity but I've been surviving with a fan that I need to turn on because I'm sweating profusely um, where to begin it's very surreal you know, for a lot of people, their lives have gone on. Electricity has been restored to a lot of people. But, you know, I guess, you know, when you live in a mobile home park, you're, you're not high on the list of priorities, right? And I get it, too. You know, you want to turn on the grid in areas that are closest to hospitals, including the hospitals, right? I get it. But then again, you know, I live in a mobile home park. We're just a bunch of deplorables, you know. We're probably the last ones they'll take care of. So, the chatter in the neighborhood is that we'll have the electricity back on by the 17th, but as I just showed you, I don't see anything happening until those trees get cut down and there's nobody that's came around to even begin that process. So, who knows when, I can't wait to take a, a warm shower, not a hot shower, because it's hot enough the way it is. Yeah, yeah we have no hot water Electricity could be worse. I mean, we still have a place to live, right? You know, none of the mobile homes were completely destroyed. I have uh, a leak coming in from my roof and into my kitchen on the ceiling, and it's damaged the floorboards. So, all that stuff has to get repaired. Outside, a couple window awnings came off. The, the lattice on the side of my lanai blew off. You know, that's shit that can get rehung. 
But the problem is with the lattice, or not the lattice, the window awnings, is that every fucking window in this trailer is either bolted shut or will not open, period. It's a fire hazard. It's a fire trap. And the woman that sold me this shithole knowingly sold it to me this way. I I signed a rent-to-own lease in 2022, in January of 2022. And I've been making payments of $550 every month to rent-to-own this place. But, you know, and I've asked her at least 15 times show me a copy of the signed lease because she said I was late one time and she said it was like $150 a day for being late. It was only like the third of the month. And there was a holiday and you know it caused me to be late. And she said, well, it's $150 a day for every day you're late. And I'm like, where is that in the lease? Show it to me. She goes, it's in there. And I go, well, great. Show me a, cop- a signed copy of our lease. And I've asked her 15 times at a minimum, and she hasn't been able to give me one. So I'm wondering if I, if she can't provide one, am I, can I get out of this? And am, am I obligated to get, uh, to reclaim any payments that I've made on it, especially seeing how it's a fire hazard? Anyway. I set up a, uh, a donation fund um, for go get funding and there's a there's a link below this video for that any help is greatly appreciated um, with some of that money I, I ended up getting a, a gas generator and I've been buying gas with that money I'm so grateful to everyone that's helped me. I appreciate you all. Or even if you just shared the link. But the house repairs are going to have to be put on hold for now. You know, I... I'll get to it all eventually. I can't afford it right now. Um, as for, I'll be uh, back on on Tuesday nights with Allie. Uh, we'll still be doing our global predictions and live and uncensored shows won't have very good internet connection, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, but I'll still be, you know, giving my time to you guys. You know, that's what we do, and it gets me away from really overthinking everything that's going on here, and so that's a good thing. And, yeah, I guess the big news is that we're hoping to get electricity by the 17th. And uh, the gas lines have died down somewhat, I think, because le- there's still a lot of gas stations that don't have gas. But I've been getting my gas, like two days ago I went at, went at, uh, to uh, Racetrack, it's a gas station here in Florida, and I went there at like 3 a.m., no problem. This morning I went back, actually, um, no, I was at a marathon station this morning on Tamiami Trail at like 7.30 a.m., no waiting. Um, but yet there there are still places that don't have gas at, at all. I've been using my freezer as a cooler, and I have like bags of ice that I put in there, well, inside of plastic containers so the water doesn't get all over the place inside the freezer, um, as well as a chest freezer right there that's running on the generator. And it's my understanding that I can run the generator for 12 hours, then shut it off, and everything will be fine inside the chest freezer. And I found that to be true. So, um, 
I won't lose everything that's in the chest freezer, but I did lose everything that was in the refrigerator. I applied for FEMA help and the status is pending. It's been that way. Every time I check, it's still pending. Though I did talk to a neighbor and she said hers went through. So she might have gotten in quicker and earlier than me, but I got in pretty damn quick. So I'm sitting, I'm waiting. We'll see what happens. Um, outside of that, I, I went to the beach today. Not to play bocce, but I wanted to document what what it's like at Siesta Key Beach. Uh, what some of the hotels are like. Numerous ones. Numerous hotels that have pools that are by the ocean. The pools are full of sand. It's going to take a little while. It's going to take a little while for the sand to get removed. There's a ton of sand that's been removed already, but this is going to be a, a lengthy project. On the Siesta Key Facebook page, a lot of people are very optimistic. They're, they're saying that they just want to get things back to normalcy. Stores want to open up sooner than later. You know, I'm kind of hoping that Captain Kurtz opens up so I can get myself a quart of clam chowder. It's the best clam chowder on the planet. Although, if you're from the UK, you guys think that clam chowder is one of the nastiest things ever. Apparently in the UK, it'll be the last thing they eat out of a cupboard is a can of clam chowder. <laughs> Here in the United States, it's wonderful. Um, I don't care for the Manhattan clam chowder, but the New England clam chowder is great. And Captain Kurtz has this award-winning clam chowder. I, I look forward to getting that when it's all said and done. But anyway, I want to thank everyone for your donations and your well wishes. And honestly, through the hurricane, there were so many positive thoughts, intentions, prayers. You guys helped make this a lot more bearable than what it could have been. It could have been incredibly horrible. And we got through it. So all that stuff makes a huge difference. And to everyone that did that, thank you. And once again, thank you for your donations. And if you'd like to donate, there's a link below. Anyway, I'm Greg from in5d.com. Uh, sending you all lots of love from my heart to yours. Take care, everyone.